Welcome to Fun Facts Channel. Before starting, it is important to clarify that there are different types of angels. The various religions existing in the world use the figure of angels in their beliefs, which means that there are several different interpretations. However, in this video, I will use the interpretation of angels by Christians, more specifically by Catholicism. It is possible that if you are not Christian or Catholic, you will recognize some divisions and names, but there may be some differences. Angels are not gods, but are deities that arose from the divine, according to Christian tradition. They were created by God to serve as intermediaries between humanity and the divine. Their wings help facilitate transportation between earth and sky. Angels are not born, do not die, or reproduce, and do not have a definite form, although they can assume a human form. They don't have weight or height, and it's not known exactly when they were created. The only thing that is known is that they were present from the beginning of the creation of the earth. Although more intelligent than humans, they are not omniscient. Angels are always close to God and ready to help humanity. Although it is not known how many angels there are, the book of Revelation indicates that there are millions and millions and thousands of thousands. During the Middle Ages, various theologians tried to divide angels into angelic choirs. Pseudo-Dionysius and Thomas Aquinas made a division according to the Bible itself, which began from the bottom up. The angels closest to humans are found in this sphere, and they interfere in our lives. It is believed that such angels can play the role of divine messengers, conveying important messages to humans when needed. Furthermore, due to their closeness to God, these angels possess great power and wisdom, being able to indirectly influence our lives through prayer and devotion. Guardian angels are those closest to us. They are appointed by God to protect and guide each individual from birth to death. It is commonly believed that each person has a personal guardian angel who acts as a spiritual guardian. This angel protects a person from physical and spiritual dangers and guides him on the right path. Despite this, it is important to emphasize that guardian angels are in a lower hierarchical position in relation to other angels. Even so, they care for and guide humans and often provide warning signs when something bad might happen. When you have that feeling that something bad might happen, it could be your guardian angel trying to warn you. Probably this one here is the best known, maybe fighting with the guardian angel I don't know, the archangels are the ones in charge of God to carry out missions that go beyond human comprehension, the best known of them must be probably Michael, even he is the only one in the Bible who is actually called an archangel now I'm going to read a passage from the Bible here that cites Michael as being one of the archangels. I'm using a Catholic Bible right. In Jude 9 it is written the following, when the archangel Michael argued with a demon, he disputed the body of Moses and did not dare to fulminate against him a sentence of execration but he only said that the Lord himself rebuke you. Gabriel, who would be another archangel, was never cited as one, but he is always used as the main messenger of God, for example when he went there to pass on information to Mary that she would be the mother of Jesus. Another angel that is known is Raphael who is associated with healing and protection of travelers. In general they say that there are seven archangels but only the name of these three is known but in addition to these three best known archangels, there are also others mentioned in religious traditions, such as Uriel and Jophiel. It is believed that each archangel has a specific mission and acts in different areas of human life. And in addition to messengers they are responsible for transmitting the will of God to other angels and human beings, and are often described as heavenly warriors who fight against the forces of evil, being considered the leaders of the heavenly forces that fight against Satan. Angels known as principalities have an important role in the heavenly and earthly world, being responsible for carrying warnings and instructions to world leaders, including rulers, kings, and princes. They are not limited to just that, but also look after the well-being of cities, countries, states, and continents, working to maintain harmony and peace in the world. According to the Holy Scriptures, 
principalities are mentioned several times, as in the book of Daniel, where the angel Gabriel speaks about the prince of the Persians and the prince of Israel. These celestial beings are believed to play a key role in the planning and execution of divine plans, working together with other angels to protect humanity and maintain order in the universe. However, principalities are also known to be very strict with those who ignore God's warnings and go against His will. They usually appear with a scepter and crown, symbols of their heavenly authority, and on some occasions they also carry a cross, representing faith and devotion. Although many may consider principalities to be subordinate to the higher classes of angels, they have an unquestionable importance in the celestial hierarchy. Its function is vital to maintain balance and justice in the world, and its presence is a guarantee that the divine will is being carried out. Therefore, we must always remember the importance of principalities and give thanks for their protection and guidance in our lives. The second sphere is one of the most important in the universe, as it is situated between heaven and earth. In it inhabit angelic beings, who are constantly carrying out God's orders, maintaining cosmic order and helping to carry out the divine will. Furthermore, these celestial entities are often involved in spiritual battles against the forces of evil, fighting to protect the divine plan. Angels in this sphere are also responsible for transmitting divine messages to human beings, serving as heavenly messengers. Her messages are always of love, peace and guidance, and can be received by those seeking spiritual connection. These beings of light are able to bring comfort and hope in difficult times, and remind us that there is a higher power guiding our lives. According to some beliefs we can connect with these angels through prayer and meditation, and we can ask for their guidance and help whenever we need it. They are always willing to help and guide us on the path of light and love, helping us to fulfill our divine mission here on earth. Therefore, we can trust them and follow their advice, knowing that we are being guided by divine beings of light and love. These angels have great power of concentration, as they are responsible for transmitting and transforming divine thoughts. They are usually portrayed holding a flaming sword to ward off demons, as well as caring for the memory and history of humanity, as well as animals and elements such as water, earth, fire and air. These angels, known as powers, are often represented as celestial warriors with armor and swords, ready to protect and fight evil. Its function is to maintain divine order in the universe and ensure the prevalence of good over evil. They are also responsible for transmitting the divine will to other angelic orders, such as principalities and powers. This distinction is important, as among demons there are fallen angels. If you are interested in a video that addresses the types of demons, please leave a comment. These angels play a key role in performing divine tasks, helping to overcome obstacles and strengthen faith. They are capable of performing miracles and usually appear in the form of young men holding a staff or staff, and are also portrayed as winged beings with rays of light emanating from their bodies, symbolizing the divine energy flowing through them. In addition to helping to strengthen faith and protect people against evil forces and obstacles in life, angels also have powers over nature, being able to calm storms, tidal waves and earthquakes. And also known as dominions these are the ministers of God described as beings with great authority and power, who act as divine rulers and judges. They have the knowledge of what is right and wrong, and they have the ability to inspire human beings to act in accordance with God's will. They are the ones who do whatever it takes for God's will to be carried out, are associated with divine justice, and often appear in the Holy Scriptures as those who chastise or punish those who disobey God. They are depicted carrying a sword, which symbolizes their power and authority over demons and evil forces. And they also do everything so that the universe does not get out of kilter, among the angels they are the oldest they carry the scepter and a sword that would symbolize their power over the lower choirs. These are the closest angels to God, who are dedicated to praising Him and waiting for the mysteries. They are described as beings of great stature and beauty, 
and are often depicted as celestial warriors equipped with armor and swords. They have great authority and power, and play the role of intermediaries between the higher hierarchies of angels and human beings. The thrones protect the divine power and they also pass missions to the lesser angels almost always appear in the form of young people or in the swirl of light they are always holding a harp or a sintra because they like music so much that is what they keep the throne with of God throne angels are often associated with the virtue of humility and are known for their devotion and dedication to God. They are always ready to do your will and carry out your designs, never questioning or hesitating. For this reason, they are seen as an example of service and submission to God. After the story of Adam and Eve being expelled from the Garden of Eden by God, angels were tasked with protecting the site, the Tree of Life and the Divine Records. These angels are known as cherubim and are depicted as winged creatures with the heads of a bull, man, eagle, and lion. Over time, the image of cherubs was softened and depicted as children, as in Raphael's painting of Italy, where a cherub is depicted as a chubby boy. In some traditions, cherubim are also described as beings with many eyes, symbolizing their ability to see everything. They are considered the closest angels to God and are dedicated to praising and worshipping Him. Seraphim are among the oldest, purest and highest angels their responsibility is simply to protect the Holy Throne, they are described as having three pairs of wings one to cover their face so they are not always looking at God, one to fly logically and one to cover the feet, in some places they say that actually instead of covering the feet these pairs of wings cover the genitals. Because they don't reproduce so they don't have genitals, in Hebrew the name seraphim means the one who burns for. That's why in most of the representations they appear are always on flames or with a medium silver ray, an example that I can give of being like this for you is one that probably everyone knows, right the Metatron that would be the supreme angel the scribe of God, in some places he is even described as being the closest angel to God. Metatron is often represented as a colossal being with wings and several pairs of eyes and wings, which symbolizes his omniscience and omnipresence. According to tradition, he is one of the few angels who can communicate directly with God and receive divine instructions. Another being that I can name is Leviathan, yes that ocean monster that gigantic snake he can be spoken of as being a seraph but of course he is a fallen angel, Leave it in the comments if you want a video just about the fallen angels. That was the video, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to rate it by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, thanks.